We got an Instagram message here from Laura. Is it really possible to have assurance of salvation in this life? Yes, Laura. That is the good news. Um, you know, I, I believe we can have assurance and even full assurance of our salvation in this life uh, simply by looking to Jesus Christ. The author of uh, the, the letter to the Hebrews says in Hebrews 6, 11, and 12, and we desire each one of you to show the same earnestness, to have the full assurance of hope until the end, so that you may not be sluggish, but imitators of those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. So, uh, first of all, our assurance of God's saving work for us depends entirely upon what happened outside of us. Uh, Jesus Christ lived, died, and rose again for the forgiveness of sins for anyone who comes to him. And so, how do I know that I have salvation? The answer above all answers to that is because Jesus Christ paid it all. He paid for my sins and was raised on the third day for my justification. I am declared righteous objectively before him. When was I saved? Actually, 2,000 years ago. I can't undo that. He did it objectively for me. So how do I know, how am I assured of my salvation? Not even first and foremost, because I have real saving faith and it bears the fruit of holiness and so forth. But first and foremost, I am assured of my salvation because Jesus Christ is enough. He is sufficient. He saved me 2,000 years ago. Uh, now, uh, our assurance objectively is based on that, but then we have this, this subjective feelings of assurance that can come and go, that can be stronger and weaker at different points. Uh, so our assurance that we're saved objectively is Jesus' death and resurrection, but we can feel that assurance at certain times in our life more than others. For example, uh, you know, we can, we can wander away from the Lord and stop going to church and start, you know, living as if we were not Christians. Um, the Lord will bring us back. If we really belong to him, he'll bring us back. But during those times, we might lose the feeling, the experience of assurance. Even in those times, though, we never lost the objective fact of assurance. Because again, it's not like Christ can go back and undie for you and be unraised for you. And so uh, you don't trust in the experience of assurance, you trust in Christ. That's really important. But we can have uh, a secondary kind of support to that assurance, to know that we, we really do belong to him. Uh, because he's given us his Holy Spirit. We're told that in 1 John 4.13. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us of his Spirit. And Paul says in Romans 8.16, the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs. So our assurance comes from Christ's death and resurrection. Our experience of assurance may wax and wane with life's ups and downs and with our own obedience and disobedience. We have to, to, to keep those two distinct but not separate. Our assurance is grounded in the facts of who Christ is and what he did. It's grasped through faith and understanding who Christ is and what he did and, and embracing that. It grows through the supernatural work of the Holy Spirit through his word, especially uh, confirming the truth of the gospel to our hearts. And then, and then we can also uh, see the, the re results, the effects of the Spirit's work in our lives and take, take comfort that we really do belong to him.